Welcome to today's episode of Learning with Leaders. Today my guest is Monika Schulze, board member of the German Zurich team. And she will be talking about passion in the job, why it's really essential. And if you don't feel the job, if you're not passionate about it, yeah, just move on. Very simple advice. Uh, she will be also talking about female empowerment and why it's so important that more, more female leaders are recognized in the business and so many other topics. Enjoy today's episode. Bye bye. Ja, Monika, guten Morgen. Herzlich willkommen zu dieser Ausgabe von Learning with Leaders. Um, uh, I welcome you, of course, in English because we agreed uh, that uh, we will do this in English. Welcome to today's session and uh, yeah, very happy to have you with us today. Thanks a million, Paco. I'm looking forward to the discussion. Me too. So, Monika, uh, in a very uh, in a very tiny nutshell, uh, let me introduce you to the audience. So, you are um, a former marketing um, um, specialist or manager, and then you switched into a general management uh, position. So, we will talk also uh, around this a little bit. You are a board member of Zurich in Germany, and you are one of the very few female board members in Germany anyway. And uh, you are a very active LinkedIn um, poster, uh, which uh, also gave uh, provided me some insights into your business environment. But Monica, before I continue, would you like to add something to your person, to your profile? So I think it's important to say that I always saw myself as a business leader. Uh, and if you look at my CV, I mean, I started at Unilever um, and their marketeers basically, uh, I mean, you could say steer the business. So I was responsible for p &L, I was responsible for innovation. So we always saw ourselves as pushing the business, which is not the case in all the industries. So if you look now at the uh, insurance business, uh, I mean, their marketeers are more seen as oh yeah, you're doing the campaigns and you're doing incentive brochures and whatever you are doing. Yeah? Uh, so I think it depends on which business you are in, um, how marketing is seen. And for me, everybody on a um, board, at a board level is a business leader. Yeah? I wouldn't distinguish between the functions, to be honest. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's my first uh, advice to everybody. Don't believe you're not a business leader because you're put away into a certain function where you can are not seen as somebody who's influencing the business. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, uh, excellent. So um, can you do you recall, do you remember any, you know, very distinctive coaching or mentoring uh, experience you had early in career, which really influenced the way you took decisions? So at Unilever, I had the privilege to participate in a, a high-class coaching course, uh, which had the aim to help individuals as well as teams. And in my first course, I had this light bulb moment with the famous love it, leave it or change it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's still my motto in life, because that helped me quite a lot to shift my perspective from oh, a lot of people are doing something to me and something happens and I cannot influence it. In the end, uh, I mean, this light bulb moment helped me to see you always have a choice. Yeah? You can accept mm -hmm. what is happening. You can say, um, no, I want to change it. Or you say, no, it's too much now and I leave. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I know so many people who are complaining about their jobs and what they're doing. And I'm like, yeah, but if you don't like it, what is the problem? Yeah, then go. Yeah. And if they then say, yeah, but I need the money, and I, then I say, fine, then accept it. Yeah? Uh, so don't go into complaining because it takes so much positive energy out of mm -hmm. your life. And I'm a big defender of positive energy. Uh, and I think there's some negativity in life which you should just avoid. Yeah? I fully agree. And one of my, let's say, mottos, uh, because you talked about yours, is um, positivity beats negativity always. Always. So, it, it goes into the same direction. Um, and so you, you, you say that you considered yourself always as a business leader still. Um, I mean, did was it a conscious decision to move from uh, marketing to a general management position? 
Uh, yes, of course, it is a conscious decision. Also because I had um, a certain moment in my life where I said I want to go to um, advisory board jobs. Yeah? Because I'm also on two advisory boards, which I like quite a lot. Uh, and that is something what I wanted to do as well. So being a marketeer is good, but it's of course much easier if you're at a business level uh, to then go into the advisory board uh, functions as well. Hmm. And um, so, I mean, that sounds to me uh, as a very, you know, how do you say? Um, yeah, from the very beginning, you knew exactly that you wanted to do that. Um, I think that's a privilege for a young person to know very early what what to you know achieve in business in early times did you sometimes doubt your path i mean the end and i think that's part of the i mean session today as well is how do you get to a position where you are and for me it was always uh, people who influenced me so i had a, a boss in my early career he who always told me don't stay where you are always look into the future and then plan what you want to do and then take the steps um, and uh, yeah, act accordingly and he, when he said that he was close to retirement and he was planning his uh, advisory board memberships at that time uh, very well and this is how i got to this thought as, as well to say this is what i want to do so it, I think it's always a glimpse of people and influence of people um, that help you to get where you are. I don't think it's because you have this great plan, but I always got inspired by certain colleagues that helped me to go the way I wanted to go. So Monica, I know that you like to get uh, provocative questions. So now I will um, try to, to give you one. So uh, you're saying, you know, this is my objective. Uh, I want to go there. Uh, isn't there a danger that you don't seize the moment, meaning that you don't fully enjoy, let's say, or enjoyed in the past your actual position when you were there because you had on the horizon your you know, future objective? I mean, I, to be honest, I always loved my jobs, you know? but I think it's good to have a vision. Uh, same thing in business. I, um, and we just had a very tough discussion beginning of the week where, uh, where some colleagues told me, um, oh, this is not good enough because my vision is X, Y, Z. And I said, look, you did a great job. Be happy what you have today. Yeah? Seize the moment and then go further. But don't get into bogged down into, oh, in the end, I want to go there. And right now I'm not there yet, yeah? because today it's good as well. And I always loved my jobs. I never had the feeling, oh, because I have my vision, I cannot enjoy what I'm doing today. Mm, OK, yeah, makes sense. So, um, of course, in preparation uh, to this conversation with you, I also saw that you were mentioned in a book called Dear, Cha Dear Chairwoman. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so and also here it was repeated and I did some research uh, also up front in the 160 German um, um, companies which are on stock the percentage of female chairwomen are 13 point something percent so obviously the question is and it's such an obvious one why so few female chairwomen are there not only in Germany but worldwide what is your view on that? I mean, I think the first challenge is that we don't have enough CEOs and CFOs uh, in certain position. And then the pool of women who can be on boards um, is limited in the head of headhunters and the head of the people who are already on boards. You know? There are very few CEOs who dare to be creative and dare to go out of the box and say, um, and also advisory board members who say, oh, I have to tackle this differently because I need a certain expertise. And I was uh, elected to the boards where I'm now because of my digital expertise, because they said we need digital expertise. And they didn't start with, oh, I need a position. Yeah? They started with, I need a certain expertise and this is what I want to have on my board because the guys who are there right now uh, don't have enough uh, digital expertise. And I think that is a better starting point than just saying, oh, for a board, I need a CFO or I need a CEO, otherwise I cannot do it. And I think that's the first hurdle because the pool is of course limited. The second hurdle is that of that is still as such that people recruit because um, they are more inclined to recruit people who are similar to them. Yeah? 
Mm. And f for men, I'm sorry, is it, it's much easier to talk, and I'm a bit, a bit simplistic here now, about football and, and cars than it is to talk about bags and shoes. Yeah? And I'm using stereotypes now, which is not that nice, I know, but I want to be provocative as well. Yeah? So I think it, it's not that easy to recruit people if you are inclined to work and think in your stereotypes. And this whole recruitment also has to be changed in order to say, how do I get to people who think different, to act different, uh, and overcome those hurdles that's much easier to get to somebody who is the same. And by the way, advisory board members are still very much uh, also chosen because somebody knows somebody. Yeah? Mm, and the, yeah. the male yeah. network is still stronger than the female network. It is as such. Yeah? Mm, I see. So what are you personally doing in Zurich, but also probably beyond Zurich, to overcome those hurdles and to promote more women? I mean, first, and that's one of my advantages, I've worked a lot in other countries, for example, also in the Netherlands and in Sweden. So the Nordic countries and also the Netherlands are a bit further advanced in how they treat women in business. And I just give you a small example. When I was working in Sweden, and that's already more than 20 years ago, I had a colleague uh, who was a high ranked manager uh, who stayed at home for half a year when he got his first child. Yeah? Uh, and nobody said, oh, this is a career limitation, or does he get his job back when he comes back to the office? In Sweden, it was already more than 20 years ago, completely normal that he stayed at home as well, took care of the child. And mm. then after half a year, he came back, got the same position, and nobody discussed uh, his career path. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, that is now starting in Germany as well, because I know two, three colleagues in Zurich who did the same, and nobody's questioning their, their expertise. But you can take examples like that and say, look, I mean, it can be done. In other countries, it's possible as well. So that's one thing. Yeah? The other thing is, of course, also creating a strong network and helping female leaders, especially younger ones. So I'm coaching and mentoring a lot of younger women, uh, not only for advisory board positions, but in order to say, what do you want in life and where do you want to go? Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you, you mentioned in, in the preparation for this call that um, uh, Zurich and also Lukas, uh, uh, your um, assistant uh, in, in your team, he mentioned that um, you organized a sustainability award, uh, which unfortunately only could uh, could be organized um, more or less virtual instead of uh, face to face. But that you uncovered, discovered surprisingly that all the finalists were female and uh, it was even a surprise for you. Uh, do you have any explanation for that? I mean, when we created the sustainability award, to be honest, I was in the beginning, I was like, oh, hopefully it works. Um, and um, I was really curious what kind of quality of um, uh, things were coming through. Uh, and I was at first completely happy that the quality uh, of, uh, of the, the, the work that has been um, given to the pipeline was relatively high, yeah? because that was one of my fears. And we had things like reef, yeah, where, where the, the team is looking at restoring reefs uh, in oceans. We have things like um, Wasser 3.0, which is water 3.0, where they're looking at microplastics in water and trying to remove it. Yeah? Uh, and we are looking at platforms where um, the uh, CEO and founder is putting people together in order to build um, millions of trees in Germany alone. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, we didn't even look at if there are those female leaders. So nobody came mm -hmm. to the idea to say, are those females or male? Yeah, we just looked at the project and thought they were great. Mm -hmm. When I then saw all those women on stage, I'm like, oh, what is happening here? Because they are only women. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, to be honest, I, I started thinking of, oh, is there something in is sustainability female? And I posted the question on LinkedIn as well, and there was a huge debate on is this sustainability female, yes or no. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be something in there, because if you look at um, how companies are behaving and they are now appointing sustainability officers uh, or taking one board member saying you are the sustainability uh, officer now as well, there's a huge tendency to take women. Yeah, So almost mm -hmm. half of those positions are filled with women. So for some reason, there seems to be an inclination to say women are more 
prone to do those jobs um, than men. Maybe it's because uh, we have we are in this caring yeah, phase, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. But sustainability in females, th there seems to be a connection. I'm really curious because I'm, I have the assumption and hypothesis that this will be more looked at in the future as well. And it will help us to get more women uh, into leadership positions because I think, I mean, this whole ESG uh, thing uh, will also develop quite a lot um, on advisory board level, on board level, and I think we have to look at it and the female quota have to be increased. Uh. Yeah, interesting, interesting connection. Um, so, as I uh, mentioned during the introduction, you are very active on LinkedIn. Um, and that is also, I mean, when talking about digital competence, this is only a small part of your digital competence, I guess. But uh, what I also observed is the type of posts you do. Um, uh, provocative, uh, but also emotional uh, in some cases. So I remember when you posted one thing which in English probably doesn't resonate so well, the 5G post connected to 3G or 2G. Uh, that was very uh, emotional as well. Or I also remember one post um, with your, I think, two daughters. Um, and you, you showed, I mean, happy in appreciation of, of the, the luck you have in life. And I mean, honestly, I consider myself a pretty emotional person. Uh, but, and I post a lot on LinkedIn, but I would not dare to post something like that. In, the, in that, you know, why is that that men probably would not post something like that? I think, I mean, first of all, the starting point for me was I was a bit tired of this whole Corona discussion going to this, oh my God, uh, uh, mm. restrictions and 2G and 2G plus and whatever we had. So, and I was like, okay, we have to put something against it. Because I'm so positive, I'm thinking, okay, put something against it and talk, don't talk about um, 2G in terms of Corona, but uh, 5G in terms of happiness and achieving something. Uh, that's number one. Number two, um, I always have the feeling that we're put into boxes when we are female leaders. Yeah? It's like, oh, she's very successful, but family is not hers. Yeah? <laughs> uh, and I, I try to counterbalance uh, also on LinkedIn to say, uh, leadership positions and family can be the same. Yeah? It doesn't have to be one or the other, you can do both. So. And I'm a sincere believer, also for men, by the way, that it is important to push your career, but at the same time have a very strong life, by, life uh, work life balance and see to it that your family is doing well as well. Yeah. Because we are in such stereotypes still, especially in Germany, uh, it is like man goes to work, women stays at home, women take care, takes care of the family. Uh, I think that men don't dare to post things like that the way women can. Yeah? So I think that we have, there we have the advantage of, everybody believes it's normal that we do it because it's part of your DNA. Yeah? But I, I have a colleague who's posting a lot about family as well and um, smaller kids. So I think it can be male as well. It's yeah. just what the I think the hurdle to do it is higher. Yeah. It is indeed. So um, we also had an interesting discussion because in one of your posts, um, I noticed that you mentioned um, less words, more action, right? And then, you know, I was asking myself, but excuse me, Monica, is action more a uh, a man domain, it's, it's not our strength. And then you reacted, um, no, Paco at all. And you had a very interesting explanation for that. So, in, in I mean, I'm working in an industry right now, which is very risk averse. Yeah? So I have the feeling that we have to a tendency to over discuss until we get into action. So that's my first, the first thing I have in my head because uh, it's nice to have everything in PowerPoint and then everybody's happy, but this thing to get into action is not that easy. And also during the Unilever times, we pushed a program that we named uh, Strategy into Action because we discovered that we're, we're very good in describing our strategies, but into action was a bit more complicated. And in the end, it doesn't help if you have a great strategy if you don't, don't get into action. Yeah? So now comes what you were referring to. Uh, because females still have household, children, career, and they are juggling 10 things at the same time, 
I sometimes have the feeling that they are more inclined to get into action because they don't have the time to discuss uh, uh, for ages. Yeah? So I think this into action is something which is very female at a certain age. Of course, it's not that easy if you're younger, but um, the older you get and the more experience you have, you can tap into your experience from the past and say, okay, fine, understood, action, next thing. You know? uh, yes, the prejudice is that men are more action oriented and females talk more, but I would, uh, I'm more inclined to say the women I know with family and juggling 10 balls at the same time, they're pretty good in getting into action as well. Yeah. I get your point. I, I get it and I, I accept it. So let's talk uh, about another very important topic, which is, um, I mean, LinkedIn, social media might be contributing to that topic. I'm talking about stakeholder management. And I know that in you know bigger corporations, you also have your uh, internal platforms where you could also, let's say, position yourself. It's like an you know internal uh, social media platform. But what is your thought on it? What would be your advice to younger professionals with regards to the so-called stakeholder management? How to position themselves towards leaders like you? I I think stakeholder management and networking and networks are extremely important because in the end you need them if you want to do certain things and you want to progress in your career. I mean, as I said earlier, you learn from other people. Yeah? So, and sometimes I couldn't say, is this the person I learned from or is that my light bulb or not? Yeah. So sometimes you talk to people and say, yeah, that's good. Yeah? And even on LinkedIn, I have a lot of things where I'm like, yeah, that's really fascinating. Uh, and in the end, the networks help you to get where you want to go. Uh, and there, I believe that men are much better than women uh, in networking and women tend to forget <laughs> to do that. Yeah? Um, there you also have to say, what kind of network do I want to build? What is my expertise? What is my strength? How do I position myself? Uh, and how do I best um, go forward? Uh, and for me, it is something which is extremely important if you want to climb the career ladder. Hmm. Uh, do you think that uh, young professionals within Zurich, for example, are doing that well, well enough? I think we're getting much better now. Uh, and I give you one example I think is great. Uh, there's a team called Next and they they were not told by somebody to do it. I mean, they just said we are the next generation. Uh, we want to be heard. Uh, they uh, created a community. Uh, first in one country and now it's global as well, so they have a global network. Um, and they now have a seat at the table when we are talking about certain things in the executive committee, when we're talking about sustainability. So I always use them as challenger at my table, say, this is my program, what do you think? Um, so I believe that they are much better now in setting up what they want and also telling us what to do. Also because they have the leeway. So we have a very um, good CEO who says, I want to have those challenges. I want to have the younger people at the table. Mm. Um, and this is something which I believe is extremely valuable also as a symbol for the rest of the company. I love that idea. Yeah, sounds really interesting. Thank you. So as you know, rounding up our conversation, um, I, I would like uh, ask you the, this question. Um, so if you look ahead, and you see, I mean, your younger daughters and uh, other young professionals. Is there any advice you would give them in order to build a career? What I would suggest is, I mean, try to understand what your personality is. And nobody is the same. Right? And uh, everybody has a certain motivation or focus. Yeah? Uh, and that doesn't mean that everybody is the same. So just understand what your motivation is, what makes you happy and what you want to do. Uh, and that's something which I believe is now increasingly important for me as well, because I have three daughters. Yeah? In the beginning, I was like, yeah, all three of them also have to pursue careers, have to pursue careers. They have to do the same as I do. I mean, not the same profession, but they have to be successful. And after some discussions with them, I now discovered Maybe they don't want to do that. Yeah? Maybe they do something else because they want to be happy in doing a different thing. Yeah? Uh, so that's my first thing I want to tell everybody. Try to understand your personality and then say, what do you want to do? Um, 
And that, that doesn't mean that everybody has to be on board level leadership, although I'm very happy if more women come there. But it, the most important thing is do something which fits you, your personality, and then do it. Yeah? Uh, and then uh, try to get as many people on board to help you, uh, to coach you, to challenge you so that you get input. Because in your own mm -hmm. head, you can never get as far as if you get people to talk to you. Uh, and that's something which I think is extremely valuable as well. Mm, I, I see. Do you give advice to your daughters without being asked? Um, sometimes yes, but I try to avoid it because I don't want to ha be this talking head, yeah? uh, which is the same thing in business, by the way, as well. Yeah. So I think it's good if if somebody asks you. But if there's something which I see, I, I say something as well. Yeah, but um, it is good if you have the feeling that the other person perceives it as something valuable. So then don't just throw stuff at them. Yeah. Exactly. Monica, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a great, great pleasure to having you today. Uh, uh, and uh, I wish you a healthy and um, inspirational year 2022. Same to you, Paco. Thanks a lot. Take thank care. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.